croton. This is a pretty common weed throughout the state. And it goes most of the time whenever I'm talking to somebody, they know it by woolly croton, but it does go by a few other names, hogwort or goat weed. I've also heard it called dove weed. So just so you can kind of calibrate yourself to what we're talking about here. It is a summer annual. It can grow up to three feet tall. Usually when I've seen it in past years, it gets about the height of the canopy of the forage, and that's usually where it stays, and it'll start to branch out like what we see in this picture. It's really common in our pastures. We can see it in hay fields, especially if they've been a little bit abused, or in unmanaged areas. The best way to identify this, there's really two. First is it is covered in dense hairs. So the leaves are covered, the stem is covered as well, and it's almost fuzzy. There's so many of them. And the other is it has a very distinct odor when you crush the leaves. So whether you've mowed it up into hay or you've seen one and you've kind of crushed it between your fingers, it almost has a musty smell to it. But it does have highly branched stems. So in our previous pictures and some of the next ones we'll see, we'll see that it branches out and it branches off of those branches. The leaves are alternate, so they're not opposite each other. They kind of stagger up the stems and the star-shaped pattern that you can see in the middle of this picture with those leaves inside of there, there'll be small white flowers that are pretty inconspicuous. We don't really notice them, but that is another identifier for this particular weed. It has a pretty big fibrous root system for the size of the plant, and the roots are relatively large in relation to the size of the plant. So they're that tan color that we see on the stems, and they're very big for what we would expect of a normal root weed. And again, we've got that distinct odor. So where does it occur? It occurs in bare areas of pastures primarily, and usually that's due to overgrazing. When we have a weakened forage, this will uh, definitely get in there and take over. But we can also have drought or other conditions that might weaken the forage stand, and this can establish itself. It does emerge later in the season than many of our other weeds. This one tends to emerge in, in late June and will emerge for about the next month, depending on what the management practices are in that particular field. I saw my first one of these about two weeks ago and in the cotyledon stage. So they're just now emerging, they're just now out there. And it is toxic to livestock when it's consumed in high quantities. It's the oils in the plant and it can cause vomiting and nervousness in livestock, but it's generally avoided due to a lack of palatability. So if we're thinking of that smell, if it pertains to how that tastes, it's probably not gonna be that palatable. So how do we control it? Well, mowing, this is usually a question I get is, can I mow it? Uh, mowing will reduce your seed production if you mow it at the right time, but it probably won't eliminate the issue. The seeds of this particular weed can last in the soil quite a while. And unless we've hit it at exactly the right time before seed production, and we're gonna go back in and make sure we don't have seed production, we probably won't ever eliminate that issue. So a spray is going to be what we need to do, and timing is critical. Some of our pasture weeds, timing doesn't matter as much, but uh, this one it for sure does. We want to get it when they're small. So these two pictures here, that bottom one's about four inches tall. The top one is at the cotyledon stage, so it's even smaller. But we want to get these when they're less than eight inches tall. When we get above that, we have a difficult time controlling them with some of our single chemical herbicides. But if we do get it at the right time, most of our pasture herbicides, whether it be single chemical like 2,4-D or our mixes like Grazon Next and others, will provide good to excellent control. So this one is pretty easy to control. Moving on to passion flower, this one is not quite as common as woolly croton or some of our other weeds, but if you have it, you've probably got quite a bit of it from what I've seen in, in most pastures with it. It's a perennial vine and it can grow six feet or longer. Sometimes you'll see a lot of smaller plants, just depending on the density, or a few pretty large plants that cover a big area with very long vines and many of those vines. And it has a very unique leaf shape. So it has three lobes. Sometimes you can see five, but you can see a lot of these leaves here kind of almost has a, a chicken foot appearance is what I've heard it described as. You've got those three distinct lobes. You'll see on mature plants, large fruit. They'll be anywhere from green to kind of an orangish color, depending on how ripe they are. And depending on the age of the plant, you can have quite a few. So this can produce quite a few seeds. And this will also have tendrils that help it climb. It's a pretty aggressive climbing vine, so it can grow up and over our forages, our vegetation, or along fences, and uh, can also trail along the ground. This one can be pretty hard to control because it has 
a really deep tap root. It has a very extensive root system. The overall biomass of the plant is probably most of it is in the roots. So getting a herbicide to kill it or trying to mow it is pretty hard. And these have a very large showy flower. We can kind of see that in the bottom, but we'll see it on the next slide. This is the flower. So it's a very unique showy flower. These can be up to three to four inches across and generally they're this white and purple combination. There's nothing else really that looks like this out in our pastures in Missouri that has a relative yellow passion flower that will have a similar flower, but it's not quite as showy and the flower is yellow. But if you've got that flower, it's pretty safe to say that you've got passion flower. This one again, mowing will not really control it. We can reduce our seed production, but most of our uh, passion flowers that are out there in our fields aren't coming up from seed anyway. Usually they're sprouts from that extensive root system. We will generally have poor control with mowing. Uh, we also have pretty poor control with our herbicides as well. They can take a lot of that herbicide and metabolize it just because we've got a lot of biomass to get that through. So we're looking at top end about 50 to 60 percent control with most of our common pasture herbicides. The highest labeled rates that we can apply of surmount will provide the best control in season and overall. You know this is a perennial so we need to be thinking about just because I may have dinged it up this year is it going to come back next year. If we use surmount at those highest labeled rates usually we can have a little better control year after year. But we need to continue scouting, we need to continue looking to see did that application work? And we're probably gonna have to repeat an application either the next growing season or even several growing seasons after that. With passion flower, I looked into it. I haven't seen anything about toxicity like we do have with several of our weeds to livestock, but the producers that I have in my counties that do have it, they do say that their cattle tend to avoid it. So obviously if we've got something that isn't a cow grazed plant, we definitely have a weed in our field. So it is something to consider controlling. Is maypop passion flower and pastures the same plant as the ones you plant in flower beds? Yes, for the most part. Most of our ornamentals are Passiflora incarnata, just like the ones we have in pastures. Usually they've been bred for either showier flowers or higher fruit production. Those don't tend to become as weedy as these. We've kind of bred a little bit of a fitness penalty into them from what I've seen from the ornamental ones. They tend to stay in place, but it is the same type.